Welcome all virtual sailors and builders. Thank you for clicking and how might you be doing today? I'm fabulous because I've spent the afternoon building within the game raft. Creating in virtual spaces, whether it's houses, cars, or floating cities is something that I find super fun to do. Hopefully you do as well and it's why you're here to check out what building in raft is like or a couple of how-to's. If you're also interested in the storyline behind Raft, I've got some walkthroughs of navigating to the location and hunting for items, along with some analysis of the notes in a playlist. I decided to make this video now to make way for future creative builds in this game, as the addition has really brought life to getting fancy with our rafts. Around mid-2021, Studio Red Beat released the renovation update, which brought some additions like an entirely new texture that's much fancier hardwood look and can be easily swapped by a tool on the crafting hammer into your existing structures. There are 65 other new items for decorations and furniture, by the way, so that means quite a bit more options for how to stylize the floating cabins. On story mode, when using your hook for boxes or barrels drifting in the ocean, you'll pick up these paper-wrapped packages that contain the recipes for these assets. Changes to painting happen during this update too. Among them is now allowing players to paint only one side of a wall, or have a two-tone paint job for the furniture with contrast. These minor changes make major differences in how buildings come out. You don't have to settle for just plain old walls anymore, and there's a considerable color swatch of choices that one can go with. Imagine the cities of color that we can build, but we'll get more to painting by the end of the video because there's just so much more you can do with the paint feature to make this build super custom, creative, gorgeous, and fantastic. You know, I was already working on it. Uh, this is my current progress on a creative server codenamed Button Willow. A common theme is that all my server names on games are racetracks in real life. If there was a cart to race in a raft, then a track would already be in progress, but instead this is going to be a city on the sea. It basically is just meant to test things so I don't waste a ton of materials or time on the story mode progress with Trustworthy. He already does a large amount of the foraging while I stand on the boat scratching my head about how to use the 1200 planks in storage. It's the scrap that I never seem to have an abundance of for nails. Just like in story mode, hitting the tab pops up the crafting menu and it's fairly the same as normal gameplay aside from a new button labeled dot 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 or etc I assume since this tab contains the items which players would otherwise have to gather, quest, or metal detect for. This includes seeds, so that players can incorporate decorative flowers, crops, or trees. Not to mention the radio, with all the game bonus cassettes. The classical one isn't half bad, and the pink pop version has some catchy 80s-like chip tune. It's something different to jam out to while getting creative. Items from the vending machines on Tangaroa are also available in the Etc tab, giving quite a few more options for wall art and of course the piano. The stacking tiki pieces are going to get plenty of use throughout my builds. They're super cool additions that I'm ecstatic whenever Trustworthy finds a piece on our live server for me to add onto the building decor. I can't help but to admit, I want more stuff in the game to create with, but it's just because I want more goals within the game to finish. It's just a whole lot of fun to dive into! All the decorative furniture is unlocked and can usually be modified substantially just by doing some painting. If that's not quite enough, notice the other button here. It's a furniture mod available online. There's also one that will put TVs in the game that stream online content through the tiny little TVs. If you want to expand on your asset list, check out raftmodding.com. But the dot 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 tab does give the stock game players a reason to build a lot more shelves, especially if they're a scrap mechanic fan too. These little statues are no stranger to me. Trustworthy and I toiled for hours on end to get vegetable crates and scrap mechanic for our spud guns. 
We even have an art gallery on Storyboard Raft dedicated to the framed 8-bit art for metal detecting and the scrap mechanic statues that you can fish up. By the way, uh, if you need a guide for that, it's on the channel. If you think Raft's pretty cool, then you might peep Scrap Mechanic for its building abilities. Holy crap. Build almost anything. Then make it move. Be functional at doing a task. Build houses, cars, trucks, boats, planes, trains, giant robots to create havoc and destruction. Whatever you need to scrap the map. When Raft started to adapt what looked like more Scrap Mechanic principles, I finally bought it to make an automated floating city. Then I got into the story, and now I'm just hooked on the cliffhanger. Oh, and you probably already know this, but if you end up placing a wall art piece where you didn't mean to, or you just want to remodel, get out your handy dandy axe to bust apart that object. A couple of rules come with building in raft, but they're not too difficult to deal with aside from placing pillars or walls for foundational support. However, it can make creating a roof sometimes a little complicated. Luckily, the devs gave us many roof assets that piece together elegantly for being made out of scrap together materials. And if all else fails, getting a vaulted ceiling style together, we can always cap off the very top floor with more foundations and then fit the roof pieces over the top of them. Walls and pillars will support a foundation being fixed to either side of it, but Let's say that you've got your wall spaced three foundation cells apart. You can attach the floor pieces to each wall, but uh, darn, it uh, won't let you span that third piece to fill in the gap. So here's where the pillars come in. Placing one to support the center foundation will help close the gap and provide support to add more foundations onto if you're trying to go bigger. I've come to find that pillars don't seem to support roof assets on their own, to get the roof to highlight for placement, you might have to temporarily use a window along with the pillar, then try hacking out the window piece with an axe to see if your roof stays. With the removal of the supporting weight varying piece, it explodes everything that was connected or contingent on it, so it can take some experimenting with the axe. I recommend doing this in creative mode. There are collision zones, and you can only overlap decor or objects by slight amounts. However, I did see a mod to eliminate this, as well as the rule for pillars. Though I've yet to try it, there's also one that allows players to shift the angles of buildable pieces, which then gives the ability for some substantially different creations. It's on that raftmodding.com site, along with the options for the glass walls. I'll put a link in down below. A little elaborating on the painting feature in Raft, in creative mode this is built in. There's a paintbrush already in the action bar that one can swap out colors and patterns freely without the concern for the amount of paint used. When in regular full game mode, paint is made by putting flowers gathered or grown into a paint mill and waiting for the paddle driven innovation to churn out some pigment. Sometimes you'll need more than one color of paint in your inventory to create the combination that you're looking for. Swap in and out of painting one or both sides with a single click for a fashionable look. The eraser button in the center, sort of a self-explanatory reset. It's easier doing this during the day as everything seems to take on a blue tint at night. The primary and secondary color wheel options allow for creating two-tone furniture or just adding a tone to the fabric and a natural wood finish that more appropriately match your theme. Don't miss out on the curtains, uh, those can also get the paintbrush treatment, as can things like the cook pot. The painting really helps set off the interior decoration ability. Many items take on new colors and designs for some transformative looks, even when using a limited amount of furniture styles. I uh, did some displays here just for example. If you'd like to decorate like I do, then you might want to consider the raft size that you'll need to accommodate all the rooms you'll want to make for the renovation update additions. Fireplace, full living room set, tables, even the one that will morph into shelves when directed at walls, as well as a variety of cabinets. 
There's a small selection of lighting, however, the lantern pieces can be used in multiple ways from standing posts, to hanging from the ceiling, or can be mounted to a wall. There's also a string of Christmas lights that one could just hang over everything to brighten up the decks of the raft at night. The fire baskets are also quite handy for making things more visible. Smaller touches come through things like book stacks, flower vases that can be set on shelves or hung directly on walls. These go nicely between the many statues that we can fish up or find through metal detecting. There's even adorable motivational signs made out of driftwood. The other sign choice proves to be quite functional for remembering what all is in your storage containers with the ability to type short phrases. Three sizes of trophy plaques provide space for all those kills that you've gotten while you're exploring. Animal heads can be mounted on the large board. Fish go on the medium and small. And if that's not your decorating style, there's also a selection of paintings to choose from in addition to trying out the different flower pots off Tangaroa. Being an enthusiast for building within games, I do hope that they continue to add to our decoration and building selections, but I applaud what's already available. Sometimes it's helpful to run around pointing buildable objects at walls and ceiling. It sounds crazy, and we probably look crazy to anyone in multiplayer doing it, but there's some objects that will shapeshift depending upon where you plan on mounting them. Take for example the small crop plot. On the ground it's a box, on the wall it's a window planter, and on the ceiling it's a hanging basket. Signs on the ground are mounted on a pole but can be hung from ceilings or walls. The zip line can stand alone or attach to a structure. These configuration choices can end up being massive space savers on an already crowded deck. Plus, all the cute wall decorations and flowers that can be mounted or hung. Great for making cozy little spaces. All of these little touches are greatly appreciated. It's not overly complicated to figure out how to get a structure together. The pieces easily snap, and if no highlighter comes up at all, it probably means that a pillar or wall needs to go in somewhere. The roof of an odd shaped building can go together like a puzzle and still come out looking okay with all the menu options available. When placing together inventions like water purifiers in story mode, the inlet for machine needs access to water. The only concern where we place it is the shark. It might be good to keep it within the deck by chopping out a foundation for an access port. Equipping extra foundation armor will keep the shark from attacking that piece so over time your entire raft can be fortified. But let's also play with a couple of these key functional items on creative mode for a moment, because it's helpful to give some forethought in raft design so that by the time you reach story mode chapter 2 progress, it won't be too difficult to route all the piping we get for automating raft life. The tanks themselves are a bit bulky, and while the biofuel tank can be shoved into small compartment spaces, it's still easily routed to an engine in most cases. The water tank setup chews up deck space. To get it operational and providing water to plants or animals, one must connect a series of pipes to a working water purifier to the fitting labeled in, and then route another set of pipes out that will eventually connect to a sprinkler. Don't forget the batteries for both the purifier and the sprinkler. You should hear the machine chugging away and momentarily after planting any seeds, the sprinkler should flip on and now we'll have an unlimited water supply as long as the batteries are replaced. Biofuel tanks each hold four containers. They can be connected together by a network of pipes to engines to supply fuel instead of manually reloading with wooden planks directly into the engines one by one. Battery chargers can also be tied into a biofuel line so there's no need to waste battery casings anymore. Engines can move up to 100 foundations each until reaching a max of six engines and that can haul any size raft. The engines must all be running simultaneously for it to move the weight, or the poor engines will just stutter in animation and fail to move. A single biofuel container can power an engine for 12 minutes, about the same as a full stack of planks of wood. For the best efficiency of fuel is best stored in tanks. This means running for 48 minutes on biofuel tanks, or about 2-3 to three in game days. One biofuel container can charge up to four batteries, taking 185 seconds with two possible batteries on charge at a time. Not that it will matter much in creative mode, there's nowhere to go, but they can still be a fun addition to any boat or in any other mode. 
as are the wheel and controls that accompany the set. And of course, can't leave out some of the most adorable additions in the game that are also cute decorations and creative. The animals. Homes for them are more opportunities to think up solutions to water piping problems or just make something with a charming country look on the post-apocalyptic waters. Line up and wrap mini stables in a plush grass plot, add a window box or two if you don't have much to worry about the pesky seagulls. In Raft we set sail for a bit of a different gathering method than many of the other farming and crafting games would provide through fishing for trash and scavenging the ocean floors. I'm sure enjoying the building hammer's easy menu, with all the pieces ready for hammering in, making it super easy and fast to get down a building from small to large. Clever that the storage containers can be hung or mounted from walls to save space in the game where you collect a ton of inventory. What do you think about raft building? Any builders from this game out there? Trustworthy and I can help people get their boats started when we get on livestream over Twitch. I gotta get on to do that more often. But it's back to fishing for trash. Hope this video had some helpful tips for your watercraft decor and thanks for sticking around. Take care y'all and bye bye